first of all, we're all people. We all think differently and we have different experiences and different things that frame our reference point and how we, you know, kind of how we see things, how we, how we view the world. So if you just ask people, is taking a pencil from, you know, from your company, just accidentally putting in your pocket and walking out a bad thing? What if you go home and you notice that you have the pencil and you say, oh, I'm not going to bring it back tomorrow? Then you just took something that is a company asset. And I know it sounds very, very small. We all rationalize that's not a big deal because it's just a pencil. If I was taking a box of pencils every week and taking them home because I had a side business and I was you know, too cheap to go to Office Depot or too lazy to go to Office Depot, then you'd start thinking that maybe I'm doing something wrong. The reality is, is that we all have such different experiences and when you deal with an organization with 10, 15, 20,000 people, 60, 100,000 people, that's how much variability you have in the risk. So you can't just tell people to do the right thing and expect them all to behave the same way because doing the right thing means different things to different people. And I think too with the recession recently that people were able to rationalize a lot of things that they wouldn't have in the past. And these unshareable pressures are really important for an organization to uh, really understand. Uh, when I started in the professional world, uh, I was told that my personal life stopped at the thr threshold not to bring my personal life into business. You cannot do that nowadays. You need to know what's going on with your employees. What are their pressure points? What are their successes personally? And I'll never forget a, a very astute supervisor that I had. You call it a Christmas party? I call it a business meeting because I'm learning more about my employees. So those events where you are learning more about your employees can help you understand their ethics, their pressures, what's important to them. And I think taking the time to understand as a leader, how are you pressuring people in different ways? Mm -hmm. And it's not always a, those direct dollars or, or whatever it might be. It's the things that you say and the things that you do that impact folks in different ways. And it's, and it's how folks perceive those actions that I think ultimately impact their behaviors. It's interesting. I had, I had a situation, a case once, where a very ethical CFO, completely ethical CFO, they were having some trouble with, you know, kind of results for a quarter and, and really needed all of the divisions to kind of tighten their, their belt buckle for a bit. And personally called up all of the divisional CFOs and said, you know, I need you to do whatever you can in order to make this quarter. You know, I just, I need you to just pull out all stops and do whatever you can. The intent was really for people to watch what they were spending, make good decisions. And there was one person who heard it a little differently. And then all of a sudden it became financial statement fraud. It became, you know, I'm going to cook the books because it's only temporary. It's just for this period of time. I, I'll fix it next quarter it became the rationalization. The CFO personally asked me to do it. And when that CFO realized that that was the behavior, they were mortified. That was not their intent. So we have to be really, really careful about how leaders talk to the organization, what kind of messages they send, because a lot of times what their intent is isn't kind of how that translates to the rank and file and you have to be aware of, of the implications of that.